Humble lifeboat, humble lifeboat, sailing coast guard, sailing coast guard, immediate, liver. Humble lifeboat, sailing coast guard, we have a tasking for you. We have reports of a person in the water. Finding out about the job, the first thing is to get yourself kitted up and, you know, the, it, it, it's a game working, it's teamwork. You're, you're looking at your buddy, seeing where he's going, who's first out, who's starting the boat off, getting that warmed up, who's taking the details of the job we're going to, etc. So it's making sure, you know, that everything's covered. You know, nine times out of ten, it's either the coxswain or um, the senior for the day. I never get a sunken feeling when we get called. It's normally um, the adrenaline kicks in. And it's like, oh, what are we doing? Where are we going? What's going to go on? I've, I personally have never sort of thought of the darker side of it. Of oh, crikey, we could be going to someone who's in serious trouble. We could be looking for someone who's only got one arm. It's, one it's always a moment of shock and excitement, and it gets the adrenaline pumping. Even if we're sat here listening to the radio, and we know what we're going to be sent out to. Um, it, it, it just gets the heart pounding. It's not you never feel any dread. You feel excitement, and uh, and you want to go and help. You've got to be committed, there's no, you know, you can't go into it half-hearted, it's got to be, you know, you, you've got to want to do it. Um, you've got to make sure your family are behind you, um, because a lot of pressure is on them. I mean, I've got a one and a half year old Alfie, and you can imagine what he's like, but you know, I'm obviously, I juggle my, like, like we said, you know, I, I do, I juggle my time to make sure it's my family, you know, and the lifeboat, you know, we juggle that. I don't go to football, don't go, don't play golf as much as I like, but you know, that's my choice. I am, uh, my role is, is bosun of the lifeboat and I'm also senior crew. So um, I'm responsible for checking that everyone puts the boat to bed properly, basically. We're independently funded, uh, which means we're able to have our own boats. Um, our boats have been specifically designed for the Solent, but we work very closely in conjunction with the RNLI. At the end of the day, we're all here to do the same job. We're all called by Mother Solent Coast Guard to, to go and do the same jobs and the same things. So we're all part of the same team. But it does mean that we have been able to choose our own boats for the service, which is why we have jet-driven boats. We work in shallow water, so um, there have been instances whereby we've had young children in the mud, and um, if we'd had a propeller-driven boat, for example, we wouldn't have been able to rescue them. But with the way the jets work, we can just put the throttles down, slide up the mud, the mud will go through and out the back and we'll continue going. We can then pluck said child from the water, have him safely on our boat, and then we can wait for the tide to come in, but the helicopter can come along and pick him up if there's any problems. So our boat's been specifically designed for our area, and that is a benefit um, for the Solent as a whole. We have crew who are expected to be competent in seamanship and uh, boat handling, um, communications and navigation. We have coxswains who are in charge of the boat and all aspects of running the service day to day and we have a lifeboat operations manager currently is me. We're a charity uh, so we operate from charitable donations uh, from individuals uh, and companies. Um, we get a small grant from the local authority. We operate on a, a very tight budget and um, unlike the RNLI who are experts in fundraising we're really just learning how to how best to do that. I've been a lifeboat volunteer for about just over four years now. Um, my role within the service is I'm a crew member and I'm also part of the fundraising team. Funding for Hamble Lifeboat comes from the local community and generous donations from the members of the public. Being independent, we're required to raise all of our own funds, which on average is about 28 to 30,000 pound a year. That's just to run the service that we, that we have. When I first started looking for things to do on the river, I was looking for something to volunteer, um, I contacted the Harbour Master and uh, they put me in contact with Hamble Lifeboat. Uh, particular rescue that I was involved in that stuck with me over time was one that had happened last year. Uh, we were called out to a person who had a cardiac arrest on a vessel uh, not far from our station. We were on scene within a couple of minutes and performed CPR, but unfortunately the uh, person didn't survive. The input that I had with that rescue was that I was one of the first people on scene from a rescue organisation. Myself and another crew member went on board the vessel, assessed the situation and were actually performing CPR for a considerable amount of time before the helicopter arrived on the scene with a paramedic. Um, without us being there, the family 
wouldn't have had any support. I pulled someone out of the river once. They jumped off the Itchen Bridge. We'd done CPR. And I will never forget that girl's face. Never. I will never forget that girl in the water. She looked like a rag doll. And we saved this girl. Uh, my role on the lifeboat is second coxswain. I back up the senior coxswain, make sure that he doesn't go grey faster than he needs to. Um, so role as babysitter for 25 blokes. I'm also the training coordinator, um, so I organise all the training needs for, for each individual crew member. When we go out on patrol, um, we have a patch in the Solent that starts from basically here where we are in the lifeboat station in Hamble, all the way out um, across the Cows, as far to the east as Leon Solent, as far west as Leap, but we do go out of that as well. All of Southampton Water and the rivers Test and Itchen. So whilst on the map it doesn't look particularly big, it's actually quite a lot of shoreline that we cover and all the various rivers. So we'd go out and um, when we are on patrol, we um, tend to try and keep in the middle of the area, do a leg around the outside just to see what's going on. But we try and stay central so we could be called to any part of our patch. And when we're afloat, we can be at any part of our patch within 15 to 20 minutes at full speed. So we're never far away should someone be in trouble at the top of Southampton Water if we happen to be around the corner at Calshot. So we're always there. And we do patrols so that we are there. So rather than sit here and have to get kitted up or not be here, we're, we're physically there, raring and ready to go. So we're, we can be there quicker than if we just happen to be sat at home watching the TV. So that's why we man the station, why we man the boats and why we go out so that we're there when we're needed. The most common uh, type of call whilst we're actually on patrol uh, is usually uh, kite surface and wind surface. Um, when the weather's nice and it's got a bit of a nice breeze, uh, they come out in their hundreds. Um, and whilst we're out on patrol, one will drop and won't be able to get back up on his board. And unfortunately, um, tide and weather waits for no man. Um, in the time it would take us to launch the boat and get to them, they would have drifted several hundreds of metres. Uh, they'd be cold. Um, potentially tired, they could be tangled in their own uh, lines from the kites. Um, so technically, uh, technically it, it could be uh, incredibly dangerous for them. Hamble's a, everybody knows Hamble, it's a boating, it's a yachting village, that's what it is, the River Hamble. Um, I think if, if there wasn't enough funding, you know, it would be, it, it would really, um, I think it, without being too dramatic, you know, it would put lives at risk. You know, we do have um, other local stations, but um, just looking up the river now, you can see all the yachts that are here. Um, come the summertime, a lot of these berths are going to be empty and they're going to be out in the Solent and out around Southampton Water, you know. Um, and that really, you know, without... And I suppose for the, the yachts that go out and the boats that do go out, they pass us, they go give us a wave. You know, they can see us there and they know that if there is any trouble, if they do get into it, they will be there. It's it's all collection pots, um, quizzes, you know, local quizzes. They do them around the pubs. You know, you'll, you'll see our collection pots around a few of the pubs in Hamble. Um, that's really where we are on public donations. If you're into boats and uh, you're into having a laugh, then uh, you can't do much better than being a lifeboatman. It's fun whilst at the same time being very professional and uh, I think anyone who's got a, a keen interest in boating, boat handling, safety at sea, wanting to help the community as a whole, it's a really good place to do it. I've done some very serious jobs over the 15 years I've been doing this and when you come back in and you know that you've helped them and they're no longer in danger, it is just a really good sense of well-being. It's a very rewarding thing to do when everything goes right and you know that you've helped someone.